Migration is a funny thing because there's this assumption that it's unidirectional when, in my experience, well, looking back on my family history, it, there's a whole lot of back and forth. My grandparents' family, on my dad's side, moved from Samoa to New Zealand. And then Papa's career took them from New Zealand to the Cook Islands, where my dad met my mom. And they moved to New Zealand together after they got married. Then they went back to Raro and then had kids and now I decided I wanted to go to university, so I moved to New Zealand again, and who knows where I'm going next. Growing up, I was involved in a Cook Island dance group. That's very normal in Rarotonga, so from a young age, I think I would have been about three or four. You join a dance group and you learn to dance. The good thing that came out of it growing up was we were very body aware. We were always taught to you know, take pride in the way we look and to present ourselves well and it was just a thing, even in a child's mind, to keep healthy and fit. It's been a great influence on my life. I started off doing pageants as a personal exercise. I was looking for a new challenge and I really wanted to put myself out of my comfort zone, which was speaking in front of people and, you know, traipsing yourself down the catwalk for everybody to judge. <laughs> and so I, I did. Um, my friends and my family, and especially my mom, was very, very supportive. But once you get to that level, you realize there's a whole lot more responsibility attached to that mandate because a lot of eyes are watching and a lot of people are forming their opinions based on what you do and what you say. It took my awareness of pageants and being in the public eye to a whole new level. So having gone out into the world has almost made me more Cook Island. I realize that's what I identify as, that's what people see me as, and I have so much I love and want to share about being a Cook Islander to others. It's really easy to do well when you've got a, a bunch of people yelling out your name and saying you can do it and clapping and applauding. But when it comes to studying in the wee hours of the night, uh, there is a lot of time spent alone. You have to have your own strength to push you forward at that was what I went through at university, trying to get a mechatronic engineering degree. Mum and I are obviously very happy because we, there's been a lot of personal growth in all of our journeys. But it does mean that they miss out on, you know, some of the important parts of our life. We know this wouldn't have happened any other way. It has to have been a sacrifice because I know they miss us dearly. All of us kids miss mom and dad. You do it because it's your hopes and dreams at that point. This is just kind of what had to happen and we've had to sacrifice being together for it.
When I graduated, the university informed me that I was the first Pacific female in history to graduate with a mechatronic engineering degree. In this engineering career, I've gone to I mean, Australia, Japan, Britain, places like airports and freight. We implement the system. And the thing I really like about this role is I get to exercise all of my mechatronic abilities. I'm passionate about building a solution that works. I'm solving problems using software and mechanics. Uh, it's like a giant jigsaw puzzle. One of the businesses my parents had was a toy shop growing up. And I think that's really where it must have started, this desire to build something, to create something of my own. That's when I realized I wanted to do engineering. And I would have been quite young then, probably about 10. <laughs> and of course, I'm married to a mechatronics engineer. <laughs> I didn't know he was an engineer when we met, uh, which made it uh, seem a bit more fate, if you will. I think that it was a huge relief for my family when I found Reuben, because it kind of took the onus off them to listen to all of my rants. Because <laughs> now Reuben and I can rent together, and yeah, he gets me. Being a mom, I think all the moms will agree that once you are a mom, you just have this crazy realization of how much your parents love you. <laughs> the sacrifices that are made, is now you've got this little person to look after and all of your decisions and hopes and dreams in life now contain this little person's future. I've got a career here now, um, a great career, and I've met a man not from my home, uh, so he's from here, and now we've got that whole international family happening. Zarina's going to have only a partial upbringing in the Cook Islands as a result of that, and I think that's just the nature of migration, you know? You have to take it as it comes. My personal belief, I think that most of the Pacific Islands should be moving towards a more knowledge-based economy and start trading on, you know, the smarts instead of just our beaches and our resources. Being only a tourism economy is restricting because it means that we're vulnerable to physical capacity of our island and our resources. There's a lot of smart cookies out there. I know them. There's a lot of smart islanders and the rest of the world are being able to trade on their knowledge and come up with IP and copyrights and software. Why can't we? Today's world of technology, you realize how small the world becomes and that everyone is constantly migrating everywhere. Migration is finding out where you fit in this new world and how you can use everything that you've been taught growing up to make those things happen. You can't be afraid of that. Embrace it. 